Hey, it's Jeff Gibbons, and in this video, I'm going to show you my setup for shooting tutorial videos. So my wife and I run Gibbons Creative, and we do a lot of video production. That's mostly what we do. We also do photography, and I do music composition for various projects, including the videos that we shoot. When I started this YouTube channel, I started it mostly with music tutorials. And I've been doing that for the most part for the last six or seven months now, and I'm gonna be branching more into video production tutorials as well. So what I wanted to do was just show people how I have my setup for shooting these tutorials. So in terms of cameras, we shoot on the Panasonic GH cameras. We have two GH5s, we have one GH5S. The first camera, GH5 sitting right there, I'm talking right into it, and it shoots 4K. And the main thing I like about shooting 4K is that I can punch in while I'm editing and have a shot that still looks great on an HD video stream on YouTube. So this camera right here is my slider camera. So we've shot with a slider on the side of our interviews for a very long time now. And what we would do is we would just put a a camera on a cheap slider, a manual slider, and we slide it back and forth. But if you slide and don't do something with the tripod, your subject will be slipping in and out of the slide. So they'll actually slip right off the screen. And so in order to compensate for that, as you slide, you just rotate the slider. So that worked for us for a very long time and it keeps the subject in the exact same spot in the frame and gives a really neat parallax sort of thing but it wasn't perfect, it was jittery, you know, because it's a human slide. So what we did is we bought this Rhino slider. It has a rotating head on it as well as a motorized slider. And so the rotating head can keep the person in the frame on the right spot as the slide is happening. So you get this really cool parallax thing, but the subject, the person in the interview or yourself, stays in the same spot in the shot for the whole slide. I like to just leave it going back and forth. And you'll see this technique used in Masterclass. So Masterclass is a great tutorial uh, website and service, and I've been a member of that and watched many great tutorials on that service, and they do the same thing. So um, highly recommend trying out the slide from the side. It just breaks things up, and then it allows you to see a little bit more of the environment that the speaker is in. So I also have a camera up top so this is my top camera for when I am doing tutorials on devices like this machine right here or if I'm on a keyboard. And because it is shooting 4K, I can then crop in when I'm focusing on certain parts of the interface. And I find that one of the things that's missing from so many tutorials is a nice clear shot of the device. For this camera right here, I have this Manfrotto stand uh, for 420B it's called. So it's got this huge boom arm and it goes out really far and allows me to get the angle just perfect for this top camera. Uh, but one thing to remember is to make sure you get a sandbag for it because this camera will tip right over for sure. So usually I have two or three cameras for this kind of setup. As far as screen capture goes, I use QuickTime. But the problem is QuickTime doesn't record the audio coming from the program that you're working with. So I went with a program called Loopback and Loopback is a program made by Rogue Amoeba. The only downside that I've noticed, and if anybody's got a better suggestion for me, I'm all ears, but the downside is that there's a bit more latency when you're working with this Loopback software. So anytime I'm using it and playing on the machine, when I'm trying to play beats right there, there's more latency and so my timing is terrible. Um, so usually if I'm doing a tutorial with machine and I'm playing, I will have to quantize everything like crazy or just adjust things because my timing is just off. And then as far as actual audio for me talking goes, uh, I use a lav mic. So I've got a lav mic in my pocket and then this guy right here. And this is the Sennheiser ENG kit. And I do like the lav mic. I don't try and hide it too much in my videos. Sometimes for some types of videos, I will try to hide it especially if it's a professional thing or whatever. But when I'm doing my videos, I'm going back and forth between talking to the camera to working on the software, talking this direction. And I like the microphone that follows me. I have that running into the Lumix XLR1 adapter. And that is a great little device that plugs on into the top 
shoe mount of your GH5 or GH5S cameras, and then it gives you two XLR inputs and with individual control, phantom power, all that good stuff on it. For lighting in my studio setup, we are using the Aperture 120D lights. So I've only got two of these set up right now. Sometimes I will set up a hair light or a rim light. The thing I try to do with lighting when I'm out shooting a professional video or whether I'm shooting in here is try to light the face in a pleasing way. And I will probably do a video about three-point lighting where we talk about how you set up the lights, where you set up the lights, and what you're trying to do to the shape of the face. It's best if you can get a catch light in the eye. I love a catch light in the eye and try to light one side of the face a little bit more than the other. And in this case, I try and light the side of the face that is not the broad side of the face to the camera. But I do feel like lighting is important. If you go to a YouTube video and you see this tutorial and it's just basically some kind of fluorescent lighting or whatever, um, it instantly kind of turns you off. And I think my channel has been successful because I take time to set up the shots, make them look good and make them look professional. The last thing I would say is your studio environment or your filming environment. I've spent a lot of time trying to make my space look the, the way I want the way that reflects me and I love doing that kind of stuff. My wife and I are hugely into antiques. So I have lots of keyboards. You have keyboards everywhere and then I have um, panels on the walls and those panels are designed to absorb sound. I've even got this thing over here. I just got it at an auction for the Man in the High Castle TV show. So that show was shot in my area and they had a massive auction, four warehouses full of stuff for sale. And I got this Moviola film editor that was used in the show. So, and I got it for a smoking deal. I haven't got it set up yet, but I will get that set up. So think about your background and, uh, and make it something fun, something that reflects you. If you're thinking about making videos, I would totally suggest doing it, even if it's stuff that you think is already out there. There's videos out there for the stuff that I'm showing, but I'm giving my personal take on it. And as I've seen from the comments in YouTube, people appreciate that. You're doing this for free and there's nothing I've done that's been more rewarding than watching people give me feedback that tells me how much these videos have made them excited to use their hardware or their software again. And, uh, and that's, that means everything to me. So subscribe to my channel and it won't just be music tutorials. It will be video tutorials and maybe photography and just fun creative projects as well. And then go to gibbonscreative.ca to see what my company with my wife is all about. So thanks for watching.